moving, moving around the region, will increase by 50% or more. That, that's just unacceptable. Uh, and we will not, if we just continue to go along without a master plan, without an idea of how we're going to tackle those kinds of issues, we will fail to, to, to deal with them. And the consequences of that are, are just damning for this region. So it's absolutely critical. Uh, clearly the residents of this region uh, are really proud of the quality of life and the quality of place that presents to them. That's dependent upon the decisions we make in that regional sustainability strategy. And if we lose some of that quality of life, it will affect current residents. And it will also affect our economy. Because how are we going to attract investment here if people don't find it an attractive place to invest their money and skill and talent in? So I'm hoping that the public and the public here and others will really pay attention to what we're doing on that and really demand that we get it right. I'm also a, a member of the Core Area Liquid Waste Committee, which is the committee in charge of the sewage treatment project. Currently, uh, the committee has devolved into two separate groups. The main committee still meets, but we also have a west side committee uh, consisting of Esquimalt, Bureau, Langford, Colwood, and then we have a, a, an east side committee. It consists of Sandwich, Oak Bay, and Victoria, who are both conducting processes right now, and if you are interested as, as active citizens, which obviously the people out here are, you have opportunities for input into that process. Uh, we are looking at trying to come up with uh, a new plan, better plans, things that will be environmentally perhaps better than the project was proposed before, and hopefully a better financial outcome as well. Uh, I encourage you to get involved in that process. We need to be able to get the best possible solutions on the table, and then when we do that, we need to then evaluate them to see exactly whether they are feasible and environmental outcome and cost and so forth. And that's going on right at this time. Eventually, the East Side and the West Side Committee, probably within the next couple of months, will have to come together and compare solutions. Because while they, they, they constitute a good place for dialogue and talk and the new processes to take place, they aren't really logically structured in terms of sewage flows. 45% of all the flows into the west side outfall, currently on Macaulay Point, come from Saanich. Saanich is not on that committee. The minority of Saanich flows go through the east side. Saanich actually has the majority almost of members on that committee. So it's fine as a place to have conversation and talk, but we will need to get together and need to uh, work together to find out a solution that works for, for all. Uh, that may not be one central plant, it may be a, a number of plants, it may be a more diversified setup, but it will need to get the two committees to come together in the near future. Hopefully we will do that, uh, and hopefully we will come up with a proper solution. We are trying to do it very quickly. We also have to be very careful that while it's fine to have to drive the train down the tracks at high speed, you really don't want to miss anything because of the speed. And you certainly don't want to have the train come off the tracks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Gardner, for that extensive report. Councilor Price. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to just uh, highlight two things here uh, in my report. Um, one is from the Core Area Liquid Waste Committee, and that is a report that was received on I and I, of course, uh, inflow and infiltration, an issue which has become increasingly. Uh, more important as we move to sewage treatment and we need to keep the volumes of liquid debt, the minimum amount, in the pipes because of course it's going to be costly if it all has to be going through the treatment system. So the municipality's been working on this for a decade or more. Certainly Sanchez has invested a lot in I&I. &I. But the interesting thing, and Perhaps it's been before us before, but I think for all of us it was sort of phrased in a way that highlighted it. The fact that the laterals between an individual's house and where it connects with the uh, public uh, pipe going down the road, that lateral is the responsibility of the homeowner. And that is a piece of infrastructure that most homeowners aren't even aware that, that they're responsible for. 
And as the community moves to even uh, reduce in, uh, inflow and infiltration even more, it is determined that uh, those uh, private um, pipes are going to have to be also upgraded. And so uh, the CRD uh, has prepared a model bylaw. This would be something each municipality would, uh, would obviously be uh, considering themselves, but there would be value in having it done um, uh, similarly across the region. So there has been a, uh, a model bylaw uh, produced, and that uh, obviously will come to Senate at some point and, and have some um, uh, discussion and see where we move on that. But just as Councillor Brownoff raised the issue about uh, oil tanks under the ground and the uh, liability for the homeowners with that, with these private laterals also being a potential um, uh, costly endeavor for future homeowners, I mean, I can really see that the time will come when a person purchases a house and you now say, you know, subject to this and subject to that and subject to ins house inspection and so on, that I could really see where it could also go subject to a scan as to whether or not a, uh, an oil tank uh, exists and subject to uh, a report on the condition um, of the lateral. So that, that is really a, a very, very interesting issue that is, is starting to, uh, to gain some, uh, some interest. The other issue I'd like to, to raise is one that uh, comes up from the Regional Parks Committee, and that's the um, Land Acquisition Fund. Uh, the Land Acquisition Fund, which is uh, contributed to by all residents uh, for the first 10 years of its life, from 2000 to 2010, the average homeowner put uh, $10 a year towards park acquisition, and it has been upped to $20 per year. This is a major investment that the people of our region, Saanich residents and all others, seem prepared to fund because of the value in acquiring um, parkland. Uh, but a couple of years ago, we uh, exhausted not only the money that was in the, the kitty, but uh, all monies up to 2016. And that was for that major purchase, those Western Forest uh, products lands. And so, we always knew that come 2015-16 that we would start becoming um, in the black again. And so uh, starting this year, uh, we will be accumulating approximately $3.7 million a year in that fund. And by 2019, uh, there will be $15.6 million. So this is going to be very important, how uh, priorities are set in terms of land acquisitions. And um, the, uh, uh, there will be a strategy uh, developed, uh, a report on this, the Land Acquisition Fund, and the proposed strategy will come out to all of the, uh, the councils because it is something that uh, all municipalities want to, uh, to stay on top of. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Price. Councillor Sanders. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Update, please. Thank you. Yes, I'll give an update and I, I'll stay away from pipes and tanks and such. Uh, I'm on the Coalition to End Homelessness on the Leadership Committee, which is quite a large committee because it represents a number of agencies throughout the region that deal with homeless people, as well as there's homeless representatives on the committee as well. Uh, last week we had quite a discussion on, we've provided quite a number of housing projects, but are, are we actually meeting our targets? Will we meet our targets in the next, I think it's four years to to um, make a significant impact on, on homelessness. There are still a good number of people uh, camping out in, in parks, both in the city of Victoria and in Saanich. And uh, the ones in Saanich are a little bit more invisible. They're Cuthbert Home Parks and the Cedar Hill Golf Course. I don't think they're taking up golfing, but it's a, it's a still an issue that we need to deal with. And we're looking at a strategic uh, communications plan to the public, so there's a lot more awareness we're still waiting in Saanich for two projects to be completed. Uh, there's the Cooley project, it's at, it's proposed to be at Quadrant Tommy, and there's Rosalie's Bridge Village, which at um, where St. Vincent de Paul is on West Saanich and Glanford. I will move on to the Royal McPherson Theatre Society, which I'm also a member of, and the, the society manages the Royal Theatre and the McPherson Theatres. Uh, 
We have the AGM, and was successful in having three new members that will bring their skills to the, to the board. Uh, I think the most interesting part of that was they actually got to tour the, the backstage and go downstairs and you know, see where the performers, where the, the green room and such is. So that's, I thought that was a little exciting to bring people out. Uh, they had a very good consultant's report on, on the two theatres and their, their position in the region and the service they provide and, and we'll get the opportunity for the society to move forward. And the Royal Theatre is owned by the CRD but is the con funding contributors are Sandwich, Victoria and Oak Bay. The McPherson Playhouse is entirely owned by the city so there's, there's always that discussion of um, would like Sandwich would like to join in on that but we'll, we'll see what what comes down the road on that. I think it's a conversation that's been going on for about 50 years. I'm also on the regional water supply. Uh, I will leave to my colleagues that uh, come after me, which are also on the, on the water supply, to discuss some of the other issues. But as for the heritage buff, I'm excited to know that the, the water service will celebrate their 100th anniversary this year, and then when, later on in the year they'll have some Public celebrations. The board this this week will be going out to the <clears throat> having a bus tour out to the watershed. And just as a bit of a history, next time you go to the K, just look up the sign on the building, and that was the original water supply <coughs> for the for the region for the city, and that was the water coming from Elk Lake. But uh, we get that closed down, and had a few other lives before it became the K, and then the water service went to Soup Lake um, water supply. So it's a little bit of history if you didn't know that. And that is my report, Mr. Chair, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sanders. Councillor Murdoch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't sit on the CRD board. I uh, am a member of the Regional Water Supply Commission. Councillor Sanders has talked about the uh, centennial of the water supply. Um, and I encourage folks to um, take part in festivities, tour, and, and uh, activities related to that celebration. 100 years of clean affordable drinking water in the capital region, long before it was known as that. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, quite a bit of discussion that took place at the most recent commission meeting, um, particularly with respect to um, the leach water supply area and uh, its uh, future access. Um, there was a traditional use study uh, by the, uh, looking at the Souk First Nation in particular. Um, 